Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing uh, Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, we'll do a um, roll call. Uh, Doug. Here. Uh, Hallie. Here. Gaston. Here. And here, that's four here with one absent and we're called to order at 5.02 p.m. Um, all right, the next thing is public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? General public comment. Not unrelated to anything on the agenda. If so, please raise your hand by pressing the hand button. And I don't see anyone here for public comment. Okay, so next on the agenda is the short-term liquor license applications. Aaron Jolly, Amherst Chamber of Commerce, Wine and Malt, Eric Carl Museum, December 14th from five to seven. And is Mr. Jolly here? Oh, there he is. And Claudia has many. Kasmani? Yes. Thank you. Welcome. So this event is the Chamber of Commerce holiday party? Yes, it's our annual event. Can you hear me? Just to yes, make okay. sure. I'm on headphones, sorry. Um, okay. Yes, it's our annual holiday party. We're holding it at the Eric Carl. It's their 20th anniversary. We've um, asked Aaron to join us through Savannah's to um, promote, you know, bring food and, and mm -hmm. drink. And uh, we have pianist and it's going to be a holiday networking bingo and pretty pretty typical networking event celebrating their 20th anniversary. And we've worked many times with, with uh, Aaron and now in his capacity at Savannah's. So we're looking forward to it. Great, thank you. Um, yes, Gaston. Hi, thank you. I, I guess two questions. One is um, you wrote for whether it's a cash bar, uh, tickets, other, uh, so I wonder if you could explain that the drink tickets slash other what what that means and then also well actually I mean exactly could you please explain that so we're going to be doing beer and wine at this event only um, and I've spoken with Claudia since I applied for it and we're going to be giving out uh, drink tickets two per person for that two hour time frame okay what's uh the reason I ask is because the fact that your event is open to the public means that it can't be an open bar. If it were a closed guest list, then you can have an open bar. Since it's a public event, it can't be an open bar. And so I guess that leads me to wonder how you, um, you know, make sure that it's only two tickets per person. Um, I guess, you know, to be honest, I guess I would only be taking a drink ticket from someone. Um, we're certainly not handling cash. Mm -hmm. um, I planned, you know, I'm obviously serve safe. I was going to bring a bartender that serves safe. Yep. And then I was going to bring another person with me to kind of work with the bartender to kind of assist, whether it be stalking, running to the car, loading stuff and mm -hmm. bringing stuff in. Um, traditionally, when I've done these events over over at the, um, the last one I did when I was still at the pub over at the Amherst Works, um, it kind of was an event that I always joke with Claudia. It's almost over before it started. And <laughs> I've never really seen it taken advantage of or never really yeah. witnessed any individual. Take okay. Right. I'm going to be providing single color red tickets, like raffle you know, style tickets yep. to those folks. And, um, you know, to make it as we have one registration table, everyone will go through that table. Okay. You can see on okay. that layout right. and, you know, everything's going to be pretty pretty smooth, pretty easy to manage. Okay, okay, very good, thank you. Thanks, did you have another question guest on or was that? Well, uh, it was, the, the other question was whether it was a closed guest list, but I saw that it's a public event and so that's oh, okay. what I wanted right. to pin that down. Okay, great. Um, any other questions or comments? 
about the short-term license? No, if not, um, is there a motion to approve SST-22-76? Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Hallie. Is any further discussion? If not, we'll take a vote. Uh, Doug? Aye. Gaston? Aye. Hallie? Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. Um, the short-term license has been approved. Thank you so much for coming in. And I hope your event um, goes well. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, so next up is liquor license change of hours application. Amherst Inn Company doing business in, in on Boltwood and Mezcales, which is Garcia's Mexican restaurant and bar. So they don't, um, yes, Doug. I was just going to say, um, given that both of them are asking for a similar kind of change, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask Steve if there was something about that that has prompted this. Uh, either some impending legislation that's coming out or something that's motivated both of these businesses to make a pretty significant change in their hours. So I just, before the actual individual licenses, I, I was kind of hoping Steve might comment. No, I believe these are uh, independent applications with no connection. There hasn't been any changes in the regulatory scheme. I think it's just a, a coincidence that we're getting both of these at the same meeting. Okay. At least and we so do that... get in inquiries like this sometimes a lot with license renewal and um, it can't be done with license renewal, but it's uh, it opens the conversation to submitting an application. Okay, so the and then we just got a little. They each submitted a little letter, Steve, and that's sufficient for an application for change. Yeah, the application um, materials are surprisingly sparse for a ABC okay. applications. So. All right, just curious. And if I could ask one more question uh, along the lines of, of Doug's to kind of clarify the rules before we start here. Um, what is striking is the how many hours both establishments are looking to be open, and I, I I guess what is the our exact policy about how many of the hours that you're licensed to to serve you have to be serving and open. So I believe the official there's a little bit of a lack of clarity with that. I believe the official ABCC guidance is that they are supposed to be open for um, the entire time they're licensed. However in the normal practice of things, there's often some some flexibility, especially in a seasonal community like this. Um, I think that's, uh, you know, taking that ABCC guidance, I think that's really incumbent on the board to try to, okay. to set a line right. there. Thank you, that's mm -hmm. helpful. All right, thank you. Yes, Doug. Actually, so since we're getting the mechanics out of the way early, um, and, and this relates to only one of the two licenses, I noticed that on the, uh, the in at Boltwood that the starting time was 8 a.m on Monday through Saturday. Um, is that, I, I just don't recall our, our earliest start time for, for alcohol service. I know that on Sundays we, we adopted the sort of uh, brunch, for lack of a term, uh, hours that allowed for earlier opening on Sunday, which is around that 10 a.m. time. I was just, I was struck by the 8 a.m. And, and it's not to say that it can't or shouldn't, I just, it struck me. And so I was wanting to check with Steve about, about the particulars. Uh, 8 a.m. is the earliest um, statewide allowed time to start alcohol service. I believe we have other licensees that also have that, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I just wanted to confirm it was it was not like in violation of our own sort of uh, local zoning or, or regulation. I didn't re didn't recall we had any specific to that. I know we do on Sundays, but just want to make sure. No, Thank I think um, on every day the board. Um, allows and has issued the maximum times allow allowable by um, state law, which is um, uh, 8 a.m. on 8 a.m. starting on weekdays and um, uh, 10 a.m. on Sundays and uh, 2 a.m. on um, for being open uh, at night, although zoning regulations generally don't allow or at least any zoning permit issued generally doesn't allow to be open until 2 a.m. Um, we do have one licensee that's open until 2 a.m., but that's on Amherst College's property, so that's exempt from zoning. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Steve. So um, are we going to do these one at a time? Do you want to bring, I saw Mr. Mendiola was approved to. Uh, yeah, I, we, I guess we'll go in order here. So I have uh, okay. Deborah. All right. So her man. Her, hello, Deborah. Hi. Um, welcome. And um, so you're from the Inn at Boltwood. Yes. Okay. And you're opening your hours and are, you're the one with the 8 a.m. start time? 
Yeah, I really took that from our previous license. So we modified our hours, obviously, with COVID. Um, and so I, I just kind of wanted to bring them back. Our primary motivation is to be able to start at 10 a.m. on Sundays. That's really the, okay. the primary um, reason for asking for the switch. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, any further? Hey, Dylan. Um, we're doing the in at Boltwood uh, hours change right now. So any questions about this one? Any other concerns? No. If there are no other concerns, is there a motion to approve the change of hours for uh, the in at Boltwood? What's the official name? So move. Okay, thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Hallie. Any further discussion? If there is none, we'll take a vote. Doug. Aye. Hallie. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I vote aye. That is five to zero. Uh, the change of hours has been approved. Thank you so much for coming in. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And best of luck with the new hours. Thank you very much. All right. So the next one is Garcia's. And hello, Mr. Mandiola. Hello there, guys. How are you? Hi, right, good. How are you? Good, thank, um, you. thank you for your application. Uh, does anyone here have any questions about the change of hours for Garcia's? Oh, Doug, did you have something? I, I think the main thing is just sort of, you know, what was uh, what's the sort of motivating factor for you for making the change, making the request? Sure. Um, so we, we started Garcia's um, in November 8th, and um, when the students are in, we like to stay open sometimes a little late. Mm -hmm. And when the students are gone, we obviously, it's a desert town in Amherst sometimes with clientele. So we wanna make sure we um, kind of emphasize our opening hours when we have the clientele here. So now we're trying to go into, um, into the nightclub scene with the hours and staying up a little late safely, of course. Uh, we don't want anything to, happen to anyone, but we want to make sure that we have the hours available so that way when we have somebody say uh, some corporation that wants to do a social and now we have um, speakers, a DJ, and they want to rent the place, we want to have the hours backing up the business so we can create that extra revenue when the students are not in or whenever we need to book one of those special events. So basically it's just to kind of comply with the uh, ABC's, uh, ABCC's um, necessity for liquor licensing. Okay, thank you, Doug. Okay, just one other one, and I probably should have asked this of the previous one, but I'll ask this one. Um, are you gonna keep your kitchen open the full number of hours uh, to go with the change? I mean, obviously if it's a, a special event, that's a little different circumstance, but I mean, if you're, if you're having like, extending hours with you know, when the students are in town, that kind of thing. Are you, are you planning on keeping your kitchen open that late, or or uh, how are you trying to to meet the the need to kind of give uh, some sustenance that kind of pairs with the with the alcohol? That's that's a great question. Uh, so uh, one of the things we spoke to uh, <clears throat> to Stephen about the uh, the kitchen and the necessity of being open uh, that late at night. We we need to provide something to eat for the guests that that are um, in the establishment. Although some of the businesses in Amherst don't do it right now, we need to provide uh, a menu uh, available for guests. So we will have a kitchen staff member or a couple of members in the kitchen to provide a menu available for guests. So they will be able to order any food throughout the time, which is gonna be from like nine to 1 a.m. So there will always be food available for people that wanna get some to order from nine to close on those evenings. So we'll definitely have food for them. Great, thank you, that's, that's good to hear. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you very much. Are there any other questions or comments? Uh, Dylan, yes. Yeah, I've got um, a two part question. First, uh, sorry, I, what, were, what were your hours still currently? It's still 11 or is it till midnight? No, so the hours right now, we're 11 to midnight, but what happens is if you are 11 to midnight, 
and you want to have, say, like a nightclub hours, and we want to start at nine, if we finish at midnight, it's going to be only a couple hours because we really, I want to, like at 9 p.m., we will close the restaurant when the new hours kick in. Mm -hmm. So, and we'll open the club at 10. So, if we had the same hours, we would only open from 10 to midnight versus 10 to 1 to give those folks a little bit of a space and, and a time to relax and enjoy music and dance. Got it. But it, it is currently till midnight, right? That's that's the current hours. Right question. now it is. Yeah, right now it is. The, uh, have you guys given it a, a shot? Just how, how's it been? Have you uh, have you been able to, to do till midnight a couple of times? Have you had any success? We we started the, the, <clears throat> the first year, meaning last year, uh, we started closing at midnight and we were getting some business. And for some reason or another, the, the crowd from last year was able to go out more at night and drink and have dinner late at night. This class, maybe I should call it a class, this class is a little more conservative and they don't go out that late for dinner or drinks. So we started closing earlier this year. So we want to keep the hours more conservative because in reality, nothing good happens after like 10.30, 11 p.m., especially on the weekend because nobody is looking for a place to have dinner. So we're thinking maybe on turn the hours to like 9 p.m. and then open the nightclub scene, which people will be, will be more open to come out and hang out and relax versus a place to have dinner and hang out late at night. Okay. Great, thank you. Does that answer your question, Dylan? Uh, I think so. I mean, my my I guess really my only question is just have have you guys been been trying at all to to cater to the nightclub scene yet, and and just doing till the midnight? And if you have, uh, how just how's it how's it has uh, been going? Has it been successful? And we're just looking to extend that now to one, or we're we're just jumping into this totally going in and just saying we're going to try it now, going from from nine to one. Have we tried it all uh, before we're looking to go to one or, or are we totally new? No, I, I, I don't know if I understand your question uh, correctly. So we haven't, we haven't dived into the nightclub scene yet. Oh. It's going to be the first time. So we have just been a restaurant, but mm -hmm. we have invested into uh, in putting speakers and lighting and open up the space and, and getting a security personal so people don't, get too drunk and getting people that know what they're doing at the front door to make sure we check all the IDs. So when we run the, the uh, nightclub scene, it's going to be only 29 and older. Nobody else. If your ID doesn't check in, I don't care you who is your relative in Amherst, you're not coming in, period. So we want to make sure that we run a responsible establishment, but we have not tried staying late open for a club. So we invested into the uh, sound system, the lighting system. We have a DJ in place. We have a security personnel coming in. We have, in talks, we have been in talks with the town, with the officials to make sure that we fill out, fill out all the paperwork, to make sure that we're in compliance, to be a nightclub scene kind of like, we're a restaurant, but we want to be in a nightclub anyway. So. We want to make sure that we're as safe as possible, but we have not tested those waters yet. So now we invested all this money. So we want to go in and see if we can create more revenue safely with the folks in Amherst, obviously the students, but also when they go on break, we want to, we want to be able to bring some bands, uh, local bands, not I mean, people who are like 30 and older, not people who are younger. So we want to be able to have those hours backing us out, but that's why we want to go into the later hours of the night, which is like 1 a.m. Oh uh, yeah, that, that, that answers my question. And yeah, I mean, um, I know we're not at the vote yet, but I, I'm, I'm excited to see this. I, uh, I don't thank think you, I'll see this nearly as much as I'd like to, but okay. it'll be. Thank you so much. All right, great, thank you. Any further questions?
If not, is there a motion to approve the change of hours for Garcia's? Um, I would just suggest there's also a, uh, excuse me, there's also a zoning um, application in conjunction with this. Now I would just suggest that the motion be, um, you know, in you know, approved in compliance or, you know, you know to operate in compliance with um, the zoning approval right. as well. The conditions okay. of the zoning. And continue upon that approval, right? So did you, okay. So does that just include that in your motion, Doug? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> so include that in Doug's motion. Is there a second to Doug's motion? I'll Thank second. You, Thank you, Dylan. Um, any further discussion? If there is none, we'll take a vote. Dylan. I vote aye. Kelly. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye. That is five to zero. Uh, the change of hours is approved. Thank you so much for coming in, Mr. Mendiola, and best of luck with that. It sounds really exciting. Thank you, folks. Uh, have a great weekend, okay? You too. Bye bye. Appreciate it. Bye. Okay. So great. So just to, before we start, did he say that there are businesses that are not, you know, like an offhand comment, not doing following the SNAP law? Did you I... catch that? I, I, I caught that I wasn't I wasn't about to, to, to dig down on that one I know I can't think of a bar that doesn't offer food in, in some capacity that we've we've asked for okay. uh, no bars have a menu uh, late right. night menu that I'm aware of but they all have pretzels or popcorn okay or maybe that's what you meant that's available I'm gonna offer a menu okay anyway um, so discussion items moving on to so first one is rental registration which um we have a little time on so gaston were you yeah um i think we put that on for the next meeting okay if, if that's what i the note i made last time so um okay. holly and i are going to catch up next week all right super okay um yeah all right and, I have um, on the previous issue i mean maybe we need to organize a dragnet and try to get munchies at all the bars <laughs> I know. <laughs> so just, yeah, I was thinking we should get those jackets with blue with the big yellow BLC on the back. <laughs> <laughs> we get badges too. Just yeah, badges. Right. Yeah. Same. Same. Badges and guns. Let's go. Board of License Commissioners, where are your snacks? <laughs> um, Bad says snack inspector. Right. <laughs> Um, okay, so we'll put that on. You and Hallie will meet in the next week or so, and then we'll talk about that on the 15th. Start talking about it. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, next up is, ooh, annual report. Okay, so the town meeting is coming up, town annual meeting is coming up, and we do an annual report, and I have a couple of drafts of previous annual reports, which I'll just fill in new information. I hope to have a draft for you today, but I didn't. So um, it's um, actually due on the on the fifteenth, and I couldn't remember. I was just wondering if you could. I know we did lunch cart regulations this year. What else did we do in the past year? Does anyone did, did we do? Well, we did alcohol registration regulations. Oh, alcohol regulations. That's right. Alcohol. Okay. Ongoing work relative to like you know adult use marijuana. I think the rental registration. You can say those are projects that are you know complex and still in process. I think and and okay. so you know. So ongoing work rental reg. I mean, we we ended the oppression of vending machines. Oh, yeah. vending machines. Yeah, yeah the uh, coin operated so amusements, wasn't it officially? Yeah, yeah. coin we uh, let coin operated. All right, amusement devices or whatever it was. Okay, vending machines, ongoing open registration, don't use marijuana. We look forward to um, live entertainment and flammable liquids. Is that right? I think Always exactly those. like that. I mean, I prefer <laughs> live entertainment to, well, I guess I like to play with fire too. Yeah. <laughs> flammable liquid licenses. So we can have that in 2023. Okay. Is that that sounds like enough stuff they they emphasized very very short so i'll put a draft of this together i'll send it to steve he can send it around to everybody and that will be done and if you think of anything else um you can let steve or me know steve can you think of anything else off the top of my head i think that's pretty exhaustive mm -hmm. i can give some some figures about approvals and oh yeah yeah that's right we need the numbers yeah. on that okay super all right wonderful 
Great. Well, that takes care of that one. Um, next is liquor license renewals. Steve, how's it going? Yeah, so I thought I would just give you all an update on how it's going. Um, and it has been interesting. Um, we did have um, a a couple licensees that did not renew. Um, one of them is the University Club. Um, oh. Yeah, up on um, up in the university. Obviously, I don't think that ever really opened after COVID. And um, when I sent around some inquiries, I guess the um, Vice Chancellor of Administration and Finance um, is set on eliminating it. And there is some controversy among the faculty, but that is the way they are going. So the liquor license is not being renewed. Oh, that's too bad. Okay. Um, all right. Um, and um, much more relevantly for the board, um, University Liquors did not renew their license either. So um, mm -hmm. they had closed and lost control of their premises sometime around August, maybe. Um, and uh, I was working up until the last minute with the, um, the owner to um, attempt either a sale transaction or to change a location was the last um, the last direction they were going in and um, due to various issues um, it wasn't going to be a simple application by any means and um, ultimately um, he decided that it was not worth pursuing so um, now the board has an interesting situation on its hands um, which is rare in any community but especially in Amherst we only have one license type at quota where there is an in-demand um, license type um, that is just available and hasn't mm -hmm. been sold. I mean, usually businesses will try to sell them if at all possible because they can get a significant amount of revenue. And the right. um, the um, owner of this uh, store did not, but we did just see one of these licenses go for, I think, 130000 in the last transaction. Wow. Um, provisions. So there's quite a bit of demand. So um, this is not something we've done before. Um, but I think, you know, there's definitely interest in everybody to be, to be fair with everything. Um, so I did some inquiry with, um, council. Um, my first thought was that an auction might be, um, a good way to go to get some revenue for town projects or something. I'd read articles in, um, the Gazette about auctions that happened in other towns, mm -hmm. but I guess that is just the state that does that. If the department of revenue, um, seizes the license for non-payment of taxes, then in that case, um, they can auction it off, but it wouldn't be proper for a town to do so. Um, so that's out. So you're left with um, either a uh, kind of a first come first serve solution, um, which I think would be very impractical because then you're going to be having people, you know, camping outside a town hall at 2 a.m. like it's a Harry Potter premiere and trying to elbow everybody out of the way to, to get right. the first one to the, to, to the counter. And then what happens if that one has an error or something? So um, I think there's some big problems with that, although it would be lawful. And then the, the, the other option is to um, pick between them somehow. So it could be based on merit, what the board thinks um, the best proposal is. Um, it could be based on a lottery, maybe. I haven't proposed that specific idea to council, but I think that would be um, doable. Um, so um, I think it's an interesting question. And uh, yeah, so that's something to think about. Very interesting, Doug. A um, couple of things. I think it's some the other circumstances where um, a license might go to auction is if it's been used as collateral, and instead of like a non-payment of taxes, if if someone was in um, a circumstance where a bank sees their property or something like that, those can be auctioned, uh, much less the much like a property can be. But um, it's a little weird. Uh, you know, the interesting thing about a lottery, I can tell you, is that it it does because that is effectively a form of gambling. Um, there's, there's a lot of restrictions on it and there's a lot of permissions you gotta get to get that as an option. I'm not saying that's not a bad option. I just think there's some hoops that would have to be jumped that does allow for some, um, you know, some fairness if you're doing it properly to, to have it, you know, uh, be a lottery. But I think that the, uh, the idea of a merit-based um, application process for a, this sort of license because um, I don't think we can just suddenly say, oh, it's, you know, it, I mean, I guess we could, but the, the license has a fixed dollar value now. It's, you, know, the, you know, we renew them for, you know, $1,500 or $3,000 or, you know, whatever. <clears throat> we can't suddenly say, oh, it's $100,000 for this. On the other hand, you know, um, I do think we can, we can certainly, uh, 
I, I think I would be interested in, in the idea of sort of defining some some metrics of which you know we would have applicants try to to meet. Um, you know, one of the things with like the the um, marijuana is that the idea of trying to promote uh, minority businesses and that sort of thing was was supposed to be part of that. It's it's I think had middling success. Um, but again, that could be a thing if we decided you know that was a criteria we we thought was of of high value to us. Um, you know, diversity of ownership or something like that. But anyway, just some interesting options to us, to our, uh, you know, for us to consider. All right. Thanks, Doug. Hallie? I was going to ask, Steve, if any known businesses have expressed interest in it, because I would definitely wait, give some preference to a local business that's successfully running. I, I'm not, like, I was thinking, like, an Atkins or someplace that sells beer and wine, but not hard alcohol. I was just trying to think like somebody who's successful and has been a part of the community I was wondering like if anybody has expressed interest in that. Yeah, there's been a lot of interest in this. Um, one one person has been a um, an existing uh, licensee of this same type who wants to open a second location. Gaston. I think you're muted, Gaston. Yep. I um I need a review of the of the procedure if 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 you don't mind, Steve. So um not they're not renewing the license, so that license disappears unless they sell it before what happens. So um this was a uh a pretty complicated case. Um you know, I think I think we did mention this before at a meeting where um, the uh, you know the license the board would have been within its rights to immediately revoke the license, I believe, because even though um, a pocket license, um, the case law is that it has to it gets six months to kind of cure itself before the board can act. Um, if the licensee just loses control of the premises, um, then I believe the case law is not quite as black and white, but supports that um, the board could just immediately revoke it. And um, I think the board kind of, I think this is just a, maybe even a topic's not reasonably anticipated, but I think the board kind of said, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it to renewal to sort out. Um, and so we did set a deadline. So, so the license wouldn't be eligible to renew um, if the uh, licensee didn't have control of the premises. Um, and so we set out a, a, a deadline to him to have a fully completed application for either a sale or a change of location um, by the renewal period. And um, he was working with an attorney right up until um, Tuesday to try to do that. The deadline was yesterday for all the renewals. And um, ultimately, um, but, you know, I think he it was kind of left to the last minute to an extent. Um, but um, I think he kind of considered the work it would take and consider his circumstances and ultimately decided to let it go. Um, so it's a very unusual situation where a um, license which has so much demand and value yeah. just becomes available to the, just back on the town's roster. So Steve, this is sort of like what happened with High Horse and Lit, except with a different kind of license. Is that right? Um, there's some similarities, but it, um, the, the, the biggest concern in those in that case, we did have um, all alcohol all alcohol on-premises licenses available on quota, but right. those particular locations were already occupied by a licensee. So okay. nobody could apply in those locations oh, okay. um, without the previous licensee being um, not there. Um, mm -hmm. and in this case, it's just a quota slot opening up unexpectedly in a high demand. And this is the only license type we were at quota for. Okay. Um, All right. Um, so, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, Steve, is it your understanding that we're within our rights to extend this um, period of time and, and have this uh, you know, past or, you know, uh, quasi licensee come before us? Um, the requirement is that the um, the renewal, there's a, it's actually explicit in state law, which is, strikes me as strange, but um, that the, the renewal application must be signed within the month of November. And he did present an incomplete renewal application to me um, that, um, for for reasons I won't go into could not be accepted. Um, but um, you know, we did have we had set a requirement to him 
Uh, and I was consulting with counsel all along with this, um, but that we set a requirement that he had to have a complete application or wouldn't be eligible for renewal. And um, he made the decision um, yesterday to just uh, to not seek renewal ultimately. I mean, I feel like we're we don't really have uh, all the facts to to make good judgments here. Um, I mean, I can try. I can go into more detail if you'd like. I'm trying to, yeah, to be mindful of his privacy. But I mean, um, yeah. Why don't you? Can well, we just? I mean, I you know, I guess it's you know, I mean, I'm I'm moved to want to avoid any licensees kind of economic waste. Um, um, but people can make choices that that uh, kind of make that feeling go away. And I don't have enough facts to, to kind of end up on, on in that space where it's like, okay, too bad, so sad, as my property law professor used to say. Well, I guess um, I will say what the, <clears throat> excuse me, what the, the biggest barrier was that um, uh, the licensee had moved um, across the country after his business closed um, and didn't really address the, um, the license in a timely fashion and um to uh to trans either sell the license to somebody or to um uh and so 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 one of the requirements for this the section 15 licenses is that a majority of the directors of the corporation have to be massachusetts residents which he no longer was and um if so to um, so to be in compliance with that, he'd have to file a um, change of directors application and both the change of directors application and the uh, change of um, in the sale application require a Department of Revenue and Department of Unemployment Assistance um, certificate of good standing. And my understanding is he was not able to produce those. And did he admit that he didn't have Massachusetts domicile or did someone else reach that conclusion? He did. Yeah, he did tell me that on a couple of occasions. OK. And so his lawyer and he were exploring uh, exploring options yeah. of um, reestablishing residency in Massachusetts. Well, um, I'm kind of an expert. I mean, I'm a, I'm a little bit of an expert on this domicile because I was uh, on the team hired by the Democratic Party to try to get Romney off the ballot his first time because he spent the Olympics in Nevada. And and paid taxes there, but he was trying to claim that he he met the Massachusetts domicile requirement of six years, I think, or seven years. Um, I thought it was iffy, but what was clear is that it's a very it's a very fact intensive inquiry. There's not one thing that's a litmus test for for residency. It's you look at a whole bunch of things and and go from there. But if he himself is admitting that he lost his Massachusetts domicile, then um, I guess that settles that. Yeah, it, it is an interesting question. And um, we were definitely kind of looking at, at things like that. I mean, he was represented by counsel um, and um, his counsel seemed to agree with that. And he did sell his house in Massachusetts and bought one in North Carolina. OK. Um, and so okay. they were exploring options of, um, you know, getting a apartment up here. But I think ultimately okay. it, there was a path, but okay. he, he chose not to. Okay, and just to finalize that my question about the process. So basically, our question is, how do we um, how do we handle the open application for this this license? Yeah, I think that's a, a question the board um, should discuss. And you know, as we as we go down this conversation, I'm thinking maybe it would be worthwhile inviting Brian Riley to um, our next meeting um, to kind of hash that out together. Yes, um, that would be great. Because, um, I mean, I guess I think technically the board could just never say anything and then it just becomes available on January 1st. And then, mm -hmm. you know, whatever insiders know about that can take advantage of that. But I think in the interest of fairness, yeah, um, we'd want to, you know, post it publicly maybe and give um, an opportunity to um, anybody who's interested to apply. Um, and, uh, you know, it could be for first come, first serve though as well. And um, it's, I think it's really up to the board um, to kind of determine. Yeah, Doug. Yeah, I think that we're. <clears throat> I think there's a couple of things to think about. One is, you know, um, this is a kind of an opportunity for us to leverage this to the town's benefit. That's one thing. But I also think it's, you know, and, and you can think of that benefit in a number of different ways. Whether it be by encouraging a particular existing, you know, good standing member of the community to own it, or who's going to pay us the most cash, kind of thing. So, <laughs> you know, any and all of those could be could be factors there. But I think the I think the other thing is that 
um, that question of fairness about you know is is a really tricky one because you know if you if we just want the first come first serve, I, I think you're right, Steve. The 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 you know the the front door of town hall uh, on you know January second or whatever it's going to be could be a, a a very dicey circumstance, and I think that that's unfortunate. I mean, we need to bring some sanity and fairness to that. So I think we want to get our heads around what our options are and and make those known so that those that are interested or may be interested as they become aware of this availability is is you know people have kind of a rational uh, way to approach this. Uh, Gaston and then Dylan. Okay, I mean, just, I, I think this has to be kind of a big, in big letters for our next meeting to, to get people to come and, and, and give us their opinions. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I guess my, my first feeling right here is that we could develop a rubric for evaluating applications and publish that so people know what is important to us. Okay. Uh, thank you, Gaston. Dylan? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I guess I'd like to, to, to have counsel in here to know kind of what is, what is legal and why I don't want to leave ourselves open to it because if we're not doing a lottery system and we get, say, you know, 10 applications that, that meet you know, all the criteria that we set forward, what is, what is the method of choosing uh, in a way that isn't gonna, I, I think, leave us open to, to any sort of uh, lawsuits or anything like that. Um, or even just in a way that, you know, forgetting lawsuits, just in a way that I think that is is transparent and fair and not just, that isn't just the opinions of the five of us gets to decide who gets to have a lucrative business in Amherst. I like the idea of a lottery for that reason of I don't mind if, if right now my current position if we could do it i don't know maybe you guys have other ideas but this is just me firing from the hip here i'd like to do something that we set forward a rubric people apply to us and and that application process is to see whether or not you can get into the lottery would be if i were to do it at this moment that's something i'd like to do i don't know if you guys have better methods and then if that method even is one that that's workable i hmm. guess uh, on well, I mean, I think for the reasons that Steve said, if we could do an auction that has a lot to recommend for it, because at least we're, you know, bringing dollars into the town. So I'm, I'm, I'm also wondering if we can kind of simulate an auction in a way by, let's say, you know, starting the, um, the January 1st price for the license is $300,000. The January eighth price is two hundred fifty thousand. You know, we could can we just kind of keep bringing the price down till we have a buyer um, in consecutive rounds, basically like a reverse auction. Mm -hmm. Start from the high bid down. Yeah, well, that's something we'll have to talk about. Because so yeah, it doesn't. I mean, why should it doesn't make sense for the person who opens a liquor store to 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 pocket this windfall? Um, the town should get the windfall given the owner of the license basically abandoned it. It should, the val that goodwill should go to the town, not to the next owner of that license, in my view. Mm -hmm. Okay. Helly, did you have your hand up? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Doug? So we're agreed we're going to invite Brian Riley to the next meeting to talk about this and see what our options are and um, go from there. Okay, well, that's good. Um, anything else on liquor license renewals, Steve? No, besides that, it's been going um, quite smoothly. Okay, and then when will we be? When will these come before us? Is it next meeting? Or um, yeah, I'm planning to to try okay. to get as many of them on the agenda for next meeting as possible. I would, we have some that are ready to go. Um, unfortunately, my agenda posting day was. Um, filled with uh, helping everybody doing their last minute renewals. So I didn't okay. get a chance to, to put them all on there, but I probably better to get them all in one block anyway. Okay, great. So um, if no one has any other questions about the liquor license renewals, we have uh, next item is agenda. So um, upcoming meeting agenda will have rental renewal, rental registration, sorry, um, 
lots of renew licenses to vote on renewing and then uh brian riley we hope right to talk about this new license currently available newly available license is there anything else that we wanted to put on there uh, maybe if you want to just look at our schedule is it are we still planning on doing the 15th and the 29th i think so yeah i think we usually keep um I definitely the 15th and I think the we're not we, we're not absolutely tied to the 29th, but I think we like to keep it open in case there are some late comers for or like anything that it hasn't made we haven't approved on the 15th we will keep the 29th open. Does that sound good to everybody. Okay. I have my second hip replacement on the 27th so oh I will my gosh okay on the 29th, but that's okay. Okay, so you won't, you might not be here. Okay. All right. And perhaps we can ask ourselves at the next meeting if what the best time would be if we think we need to have it. Like okay. Maybe we could do it, like knock it out in the morning or something. Okay. I don't know. I don't, I mean, I'm, it's hard to predict for me. Okay. All right. So we'll discuss the 29th at the 15th. Um, yeah, it's generally, um, it's generally good to have a meeting kind of right near the end of December because, um, well, the the app, actual liquor license renewal form must be signed the month of November. I'm a bit more flexible with things like insurance certifications and things like that. So, um, you know, as long as we set a date certain, I can send a message out to everybody without standing obligations that if you don't get this into me by this time, then um, your license, you know, you won't have a, you won't have a license for a couple of days in January until we meet again. Okay, so why don't we just say the 29th then, if that's all right, and we'll try to keep it uh, just no discuss, no, not plan for any discussion items. Yeah, just the last renewals. Just the last renewals. And I'll all try right. to get everything that's ready to go on to the 15th, and we will just have the stragglers. Okay, does that sound good to everybody? Okay, all right. Um, anything, oh, topics not anticipated. 48 hours prior to the meeting. Does anyone have any, Doug? I just had a question. We we got. Uh, I think you forwarded to us um, the action of the ABCC relative to. Oh yeah, the sting and operation. So I was curious if you had any more information regarding that relative to um, uh, you know additional findings. Did they appeal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just curious as to where that sits at the moment. No, that was that was a disposition. I think so. I think they do have a eight or nine day suspension to be served in January. Um, so, um, I was never aware of any of this until I got the notice from the ABCC that the, um, you know, they, the violation had occurred and the, the, the violation report. And, um, I think it was actually a couple of years ago, but because of COVID, it kind of got delayed, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, it was certainly an interesting one. I had no idea they went to those kind of lengths. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Doug. Just to follow up. I mean, this is, this is a little disconcerting because this is a business that we've actually, um, locally done a similar action on um you know conversations about scorpion balls if you go back right, to that. i remember that <laughs> before before porta uh you know we did this and so so that's the other thing that's a little bit um concerning to me is just sort of a second action there at the same location although well, you're saying steve and i didn't notice this and that's my fault but you said it was the actual sort of violation that they identified was was quite a while ago <laughs> Um, if I remember, if I'm remembering correctly, um, I think it was because I remember seeing the violation report some time ago. Yeah. Um, I can try to pull it up and see when it was. I think it's December 21. Oh, well, that was the hearing. Sorry. It's 20, February 2020. Oh. Right, right before the pandemic. I mean, yeah. Now, it was the only thing to come out of this was a, an eight day suspension of the license? Um, I don't know if they would include any criminal charges in that, um, but I also have no reason to think there was necessarily. So that's this is all I'm aware of. Right, Doug? Can we, uh, can we offer a suggestion about when those days are? Because, you know, as is the case with summer in Amherst, uh, the January, uh, you know, second to january like 20th is a pretty it's quiet dead. time and yeah. so the sort of 
the kind of the sting of the uh, of the enforce of the penalty is not as great when you do, you when you have a, a period of time that's that's not as busy. So I don't know if we can offer a suggestion to the ABCC about the dates, but we may want to because it's again it's not the first violation for that business. That's the other reason why I, I sort of bring this up, and it's not to say we change anything or not. I'm just to broaden the conversation just to touch on it. Yeah, pulling this up now, um, it looks like uh, it's for seven days from January 9th to January 15th. Um, it is the ABCC's case, and they, they've they already issued when it's going to be. Um, I mean, I suppose the, the board can always write a letter, but um, I don't know if there is any um, – I, I don't know if they really – Certainly, I don't think they ever really consult the LA on on dates. Yeah, we're just such a seasonal town. It's it's yeah. You know, some penalties have more more bite than others in in Amherst, but yes. I'm not. Yeah, I guess the, there's there. also offer offer for a compromise in lieu of suspension. Yeah. What would that be? What do you mean? Um, I believe they can pay a fee in lieu. Oh, okay. thousand dollars <laughs> there is actually a calculation here yeah it's um, it's not that much oh no it's actually quite complicated it's almost it looks like huh. a 1040 almost involving their annual receipts from alcoholic beverages and invoice costs and days of operation and daily gross alcoholic beverage profit and um it needs to be signed off on by an accountant, I guess. But yeah, it's it's an interesting glimpse. I don't know if mm -hmm. I don't know if they'll yeah. be that, but... is it worth writing a letter to the ABCC to suggest it or do you think they'd be inflexible? Um I mean my gut instinct is they probably wouldn't um wouldn't care, but okay. I don't know. We've never we've never tried, so hmm. be a question for Brian Riley next time. Not necessarily yeah. now, but we can just sort of pose the question. Okay. Like, Right, right, right. This happens. I mean, because we've had a couple of these now. You know, does does our input matter to the ABCC or not? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a that's a hell of a business model, though. Just selling sex. It's the one thing. Like you, know, you get a couple twenty year olds in there with a fake, but my God, just actively delivering alcohol to sixteen year olds. My God, that's uh. Well, delivering alcohol. Look, it, just delivering alcohol is illegal, <laughs> regardless of the age of the person buying. You know, it's, I mean, you know, I, I I sometimes think that we don't we don't have a, a whole lot of authority here. But then the ABCC, it's like, what what more could you want? All right, eight days you can't sell alcohol to kids anymore. <laughs> After that, you got to be a little bit sneakier, guys. Come on. What I'm most curious about is how this how this started. Was it the the customer who asked or the business or offered and also how the police became aware of this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think the headmaster heard about it from some exit interviews from yeah. McDuffie students. <laughs> and so he, he tipped off the Granby police yeah. and they got in touch with the Amherst police. And then they contacted a, what was it? A minor operative? Yeah. Is that what it was called? Oh, I guess. Yeah, that is there. I guess it was <laughs> alcohol and cigarettes. We gotta yeah. like send this to some writers. It's really good material. For, I know it is really <laughs> good. Show. It's sort of like one of those. What's that guy's name who did? Um, can't remember it now. Those quirky movies. The Royal Tenenbaum. Uh, yeah. Oh, um, Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, okay. Well, nope. yes, yeah, so that's something that's good to talk to Brian Riley about that, Doug, next time. Yeah, I, I just think, if, you know, I mean, we're ha I'm happy that ABCC's, you know, had the opportunity to come and do this kind of thing and finding things we aren't likely to find. And so that's great. But, you know, do they care about our opinion? You know, we right. have anecdotal stuff that's useful to them or, or whatever. I'm so just curious. Okay. All right. Any other topics not anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting? Anything? No? Okay. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, we'll take a vote. Hallie. Aye. Doug. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Dylan. Aye. 
And I vote aye, five to zero. We're adjourned at 5.56 p.m. Um, bye, everybody. Thank you. See you next on the 15th. Yes. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you on the 15th. Bye. Bye. Bye.